joining me here right now, Fox Sports College football analyst and the author of the QB, The Making of Modern Quarterbacks, Bruce Feldman, back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Bruce? I'm doing well, Rich. Good to be on with you. Thank you for calling in. Appreciate it. So is Steve Sarkeesian in trouble in USC? Yeah, I think he's in trouble in regards to, you know, he had mentioned in there in that press conference where he's fielding questions that he is going to go to some sort of treatment. Uh, he doesn't feel like he necessarily has a problem. But the question is, you know, what kind of treatment program can you go to? You know, you're basically on the start of a college football season and you're a head coach. I mean, those two things, I mean, seem to be at odds in terms of how do you balance that. I mean, I know from talking to a lot of people both around the USC program and in college football, uh, there's been concerns about Steve Sarkeesian's off-field behavior for quite some time. He's gone through a uh, he's going through a divorce this off-season, which has been obviously tough on him and his family. There's been a lot of there's been just a lot of challenges for him. And you know, one of the people I know is real close to him. I had talked to over the weekend and said, you know, I just hope that he does not blow everything. Uh, you know, you know, on this because he's, you know, this is a guy who grew up in L.A. At one point, was a USC baseball player, was an assistant there in the glory days. Lots of people like him a lot, and uh, you know, he's just got some, he's got some life challenges right now that I think were became became national news, quite honestly, in the sports world over the weekend for his behavior, and I think that put it on the front burner. And now, coming out of this, you saw him, and he looked just very, very beaten down in that in that press conference. Well, I mean, the question is, is can somebody in his position be given the second chance that we see so many kids be given a second chance? And we're going to be talking about Baylor and Washington slash Boise State with you in a moment. Or, or can somebody in his position uh, not be given that second chance because he is in that position and what he represents for school and – and the character that he must put out there in public is something that he has got to hold uh, his kids' feet to that fire, and no, he no longer can. Where do you stand on this, Bruce? You know, I, I think there is something he said for second chances in this case, if it's sincere and there's a real, and I do think it's sincere on his part. I just wonder, you know, again, you know, is the best thing for him time away to go into a full treatment program or not that's up for his bosses and him to really decide I, I you know I thought it was I, I will say this in the wake of all that stuff from this, you know this weekend with Sarkeesian he's got some really good leaders within that locker room Cody Kessler uh, a couple of years ago as a young quarterback I was around the program quite a bit when Lane Kiffin got fired early in the year uh, Ed Ogeron took over Cody Kessler is a terrific leader and he held that program together in the locker room, and he said a lot of the right things and said, you know, Steve Sarkeesian came to the program and apologized to them and looked them in the eye and explained in detail what his problems were. Now, they wanted to keep a lot of those, because he had mentioned, you know, Sarkeesian had mentioned mixing alcohol and meds, you know, Saturday night, and that's part of the problem that he had. Uh, you know, I, I think if his players feel like, hey, you know what, we respect what he's dealing with and going through and respect how he handled it and how he will handle us, you know, because otherwise you run into the risk of, you know, a coaching staff try to discipline players when they make mistakes and you look at them going, wait a minute, how can we respect you when, when you've embarrassed yourself in much more public ways? And, you know, at least from the, from what the players said today, they, they are comfortable with the dynamic as it is. At least you know, that's what they said publicly. Now what exists, you know, beyond for the hundred players on the team, you know, that may be a different story. And, you know, it's going to be a very interesting season with the Trojans this year. Fox Sports' Bruce Feldman joining him here on the show. I know only have a few minutes with you left. Let's get into what's, what is happening on the Baylor campus. For people who may not know, can you throw it out there and explain to us how you think this is going to play out, Bruce? Yeah, well, Rich, you know, you know that expression we hear a lot in politics, it's not the crime, it's the cover-up. Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, it's potentially both. The crime is horrific. They took a player, Sam Bukowachu, who's a Texas kid, who had played at Boise State, was freshman All-American, and then got dismissed for a you know, like it was put out as unspecified team rule or team violation. Got booted from the program. Well, it turns out he had some serious issues up there, was a violent kid off the field, went to Baylor while he was sitting out. Uh, he sexually assaulted a female Baylor soccer player, uh, was indicted, 
the school really seemed like it had a very dubious internal investigation before it, you know, it didn't even go forward with it. Yet the courts did. Uh, that player was found guilty last week. And what we're now left with is a couple of fronts. One, in the case of Art Bryles, it was like, did he knowingly bring on this, this kind of menace onto his team? Did Chris Peterson, the then Boise State coach, did he tell him in detail or in some detail what this guy had his issues were because Art Riles on Friday after this player is found guilty said, you know, all that basically coach Peterson said was that he had been depressed and he wanted to come closer to home. Let's be honest. No football program is kicking off a yeah, for being homesick America for being depressed at home. That's not reality. So, you know what, there you wonder if it passes a smell test. There's a big investigation going on. I'm sure you remember the name Kenneth Starr. Yes, they do. He is the chancellor and president of Baylor, and it's going to be very interesting to see. We can, you know, I would be very surprised if there was not a civil lawsuit coming down the pipeline from this girl's family. And it is a really, really ugly story. This is not like Bruce Pearl and, and barbecues and lying to the end or Jim Trussell and the tattoo gate stuff. We're talking about a serious crime uh, here, and whether Baylor covered it up or how they handled it, it looks very, very shaky. Well, how, how in the world does does uh, somebody get kicked off a team and gets taken by another program that not get looked into by saying fine uh, exactly what happened? I mean, how, how that doesn't forget about a smell test that passes no test, Bruce. You're right. I mean, after Bryles' comments on Friday, I went out and asked a bunch of head football coaches. I asked five head coaches, two other football coaches. I said, what's the protocol when you find, because a lot of times you've seen it, uh, along the ticker it'll say, you know, violation of team policy or whatever, and a lot of times you assume it's like, okay, this guy probably had too many positive drug tests or cheated or did whatever. Uh, I said, well, how long, will you ever take a kid if you cannot find the real reason why he was kicked off a team? And all seven guys I talked to said, no, you cannot do that. You just don't know what you're getting, and in all likelihood, whatever, whatever he did is probably going to come out anyway. What was interesting was one of the head coaches said, you know what, what happens is head coaches talk to head coaches, assistant coaches talk to assistant coaches, and trainers talk to trainers uh, yeah. to try to get intel. In the case of the Baylor story, there's a big expose in Texas Monthly on what happened at Baylor, and there were documents from about the, what the Boise State trainer had said. So Boise State trainer knew, I'm pretty sure, some details that the head coach Chris Peterson knew. So. The burden of proof is what did Art Riles want to know and what did he know? Last question on richeisenshow.com, the poll question, what should USC do with Steve Sarkeesian, fire him, suspend him or nothing? How, do you, how would you vote on that, Bruce? I would have said suspend him and let him, uh, suspend him, let him get real treatment. That's what it sounds like you're talking about. I mean, Rich, this is the one, you know, short of being in a game, this was the one USC event you got to be on your game. It's boosters, it's you know, players' families, it's their, you know, they're power brokers, and he was a mess. And that's, that's not a good situation if you can't control yourself in that kind of situation. All right, I'd love to have you back on maybe next week, talk about actual college football instead of what's going on off the field, you know, stuff like Jim Harbaugh, how he can win 11 games in his first year as a Michigan coach. Hey, I'll, okay. be, I'll be in Ann Arbor flying up there Sunday. No, I love it. All right, I'm going to give you a call. Okay, Bruce? Got it. You bet. That's at Bruce Feldman, CFB, Fox Sports College football analyst, the QB, the making of modern quarterbacks. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.